Electric cars don't last. They break down so quick, so easy. You will never find something with a whole lot of life on it, let alone one with more than, I think that says 4,000 miles. Wait, that can't be right. I'm Brian. Welcome to Future Oz. Oh, 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 oh. So I've got Alex here. Alex is uh, running the QC shop here in Portland. They do a variety of uh, repairs on electric vehicles, the kind of things that are outside of warranty. Sometimes uh, things that have never been seen before. Would you say that's true? Oh yeah, for sure. You get some weird ones, I'm sure. Now this says you've driven, what, four miles it says? So yeah, this car has over 400,000 miles. Actually, uh, it's almost to 460,000 as of today. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really getting up there. What Alex likes to do is when he goes out to these events, which he does fairly regularly, he'll bring a sheet of paper and write down the actual mileage and put it on, a, on the windshield. So when people walk by, they get to say, a what? Now, what on earth would lead the original owner of this to drive so many miles? Yeah, so the original owner of this car uh, was actually a full-time Uber driver in the San Diego area. So he bought the car brand new and over the course of the following five years, uh, he racked up just a little over 400,000 miles. So when I bought the car, I think it was maybe just a month over the five year mark and it had 408,000 on it. Now, uh, his warranty was how many miles again? Yeah, so on the, a lot of these older Model S's, most of them, uh, they had an eight year unlimited mileage warranty on the battery and the drive units. Unbelievable. And uh, how much did he pay for supercharging? Free unlimited supercharging, yep. <laughs> so this car was owned by one of those jackasses you kept hearing about uh, who were, but really it was a bit of a gamble for Tesla. They knew some people would be doing that with the cars, um, but they also knew that it wouldn't be an overwhelming number and that it wouldn't be um, something that would bankrupt the company and it's getting the cars on the road at a time when they weren't there yet. Yeah, absolutely. So, it's looking good. It's in remarkable condition. Not for its age, for its age it looks normal, but for its mileage, for the amount of wear on it. Uh, what repairs were done to the drivetrain under warranty? Yeah, so I only kind of have a partial service history as far as the, the, the repairs on the car go. Um, the previous owner told me that the battery had been replaced at somewhere in the neighborhood of about 250, 260,000 miles. I think his exact words to me when I bought the car was it was replaced about 150,000 miles ago. So at 408,000, it's 250 plus or minus. Uh, so it still has that battery in the car. So the battery's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 200, 210,000 miles. So <laughs> what you're saying is this older car on the older style, on the older design with the older chemistry, the battery, the original battery still got well over 200,000. Yep. And when it was replaced, the one that went in has well over 200,000. Yep. And while the previous owner had it, of course, that was near daily supercharging. Often twice, I imagine. Yeah, probably often twice a day, but yeah, almost certainly, you know, pretty much daily supercharging. I would imagine at least five days a week he was plugging into the supercharger. And never slow charging because that costs money. Um, he, I wouldn't be surprised if he slow charged at home overnight, but with the- But that costs money. In true. San Diego, they've got high rates. Ab absolutely. 25, yeah. 30 cents sometimes yeah. at home. So I would be surprised this car, this battery and the one before it got a beating, doesn't seem to have affected it. How's your battery health today? Yeah, so as of right now, the battery's at about 86% capacity, um, <laughs> which is a pretty good metric for health. Um, the really important metric to keep in mind for these types of packs in particular is what's called uh, the calculated average capacity for each of the bricks, or CAC okay. for short. Um, and, and, and how is the CAC? So the, the CAC values are in a really good range. So basically the lower the differential between them, the, the better health it is. And anything under five or six is good. This one's at about 3.3. Okay. Yeah. So you figure you've got 
indefinite on this battery until something changes in those figures. Yep, I'll probably just run it until it has a problem and then determine whether I'll do a repair or an upgrade or whatever, yeah. So battery replaced once motors? It had the front drive unit replaced once. That was probably done at about 375,000. Um, and then as far as I know, the rear drive unit's still original. Of course, this car is running the small drive units front and rear because it is the dual motor uh, non-performance car with the, the smaller battery, it's, it's a 70. Mm -hmm. that, is, uh, that defies a lot of the rumors that we've heard. Now you've been to a lot of shows, you've met, um, I imagine some of the same people, I have at least the same types of people who have 200, 300,000 plus miles on their car. It never seems surprising anymore. The only other car company I can think of with a reputation north of 300,000 is Toyota. Yeah, probably and, so. And only on certain models. Yeah. I've heard tell of the million mile Mercedes, and then you ask how much have you had done, and it's a ship of Theseus. There ain't nothing original left on that car, uh, except the VIN. Um, so does this, should this uh, give people peace of mind when getting an S, a three, a Y, another brand of car? Is it inherent to the drivetrain that there's reliability? Yeah, so, I mean, there's a ton of factors that go into the reliability. Um, and in particular, one of the big things for batteries, it's not so much the degradation or the amount of fast charging or, well, I mean, those things do play a factor. Everything plays a factor. Um, so, you know, there's certainly battery failures at lower mileage and there's battery failures at higher mileage. Um, but just because a car has high miles doesn't mean it's not a good car. Uh, and I think that's true of a lot of things. Um, I know of no brand that is immune to all mechanical failures. You can lose an engine on a very good car. That's what warranties are for. Uh, the fact that many manufacturers like Nissan still only do 36,000 mile drivetrain to me is a bit of a red flag because a lot of companies are doing significantly longer drivetrain warranties than that. Actually, I guess their drivetrain 60, but 60,000 mile, 36 bumper to bumper. And I had one of those and the motor mounts went out at about 40,000 miles, two of them. And that is not drivetrain, apparently. So that was expensive because it's a van. Can't help it. Got to complain once in a while. Um, any other things? I've heard, you know, door handles go out. Yeah, um, so door handles are a pretty common thing. Uh, the previous owner told me it had had a total of seven door handle replacements. Okay. Which, for a car that's doing Uber all the time, where the door handles are just always actuating. All day. You know, it's, uh, these have the, the newer style retrofitted handles on them. So the old style ones tended to have issues with wire breakage. And these ones use a totally different setup in terms of sensing when the door handles are retracted and extended. So they tend to hold up a lot better. I don't imagine I can find it, but I will, I will try and look. I apologize, it's definitely not here, but there was a video from a gentleman who I believe was an engineer at Tesla who showed the evolution of that part and how it got simpler and simpler and simpler because yeah. it was failure prone. I, I think I've seen, seen that same video as well, yeah. And he also it's a showed really good, really how much good bigger the front kept getting. Yeah. So that was interesting. And then of course, this is your invisible uh, cameras for your non-existent, for your, uh, would you call this uh, P0? So this is AP1. Oh, it does have, yep. oh, it's so got, it's got, got the, the mobile eye. It's got the single camera up, up in the windshield and then it has the mobile eye sensor in the front bumper. Okay. And then of course it's got the, uh, the little proximity sensors and sure. bumpers, which are still used on this car. <laughs> yes. Um, so you'll notice just the tiniest scuff here for a car with this many miles. That's yeah, it's great. It's got a few few little scuffs here and there, but it kind of blends in with the black paint. And, and so little road rash, uh, curb rash on the on the rims. That's it's just holding up awfully well. So uh, what did you pay for it? So I paid fifteen thousand for it when I bought the car, mm -hmm. um, which at the time it still had another three years, almost three full years left on the warranty. And that transferred? And that transferred, of course. Wow. Um, these days, it certainly wouldn't be worth quite that much, but at the time, it was a pretty good deal. I think it was probably the cheapest Tesla anywhere in the country when I bought it. And what's fun is that 
three years of warranty remaining. How much of it did you use? Zero percent? Yeah, I didn't use anything for the powertrain warranty because both the, the battery and the motors are still the same as when I bought it. Yeah. did have a couple of other uh, minor maintenance issues that I had to take care of. Uh, but of course, I did all those myself working on the cars. So. Uh, for, for having a shop, in case you guys forgot to notice, we got the, the, and the hat too, QC Charge. Uh, uh, not a sponsor, just a fan. Uh, I'm a fan of his, rather. I imagine he's a big fan of the channel. Uh, anything else we're missing on this? Anything we're forgetting? Um, it just looks good. Yeah. And you know, these are the things that people were bitching about. The This is a panel gap. Look at that, you guys. It's so crooked. This doesn't line up exactly perfectly. Hey, if I can get a car that runs for 400 and how many? 60,000 miles? Yeah, I think it's almost 460 now. That is, and if you knew at 250,000 that replacing that battery was gonna get you another 200,000, the, the decision becomes a bit easier. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So Alex is on, uh, is on X. Uh, he comes to a number of events. They've got a website, what is that? Um, so we do have a website for QC Charge. It's not totally updated with my location info and stuff on here yet, um, but it's just qccharge.com. Yeah, and you can uh, also look it up on the internet and find it that way. Uh, yeah, so what do we miss? What do we misunderstand? What do you think of a 400 plus thousand mile car? How many of them have you heard of at all? And uh, would, you, would you drive one? Uh, let us know in the comments below and uh, stay tuned, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots.